Now you see it, now you know. Hi everybody, it's Margaret, and today I have a Goodwill Blue Box jewelry unboxing for you. And this is the five pound box that you get for $19.99, and then shipping on top of that. So it's just a mix of everything. Um, some of it's craft wear, some of it's repairable, some of it's wearable, sellable. So basically, I am trying to get enough jewelry out of this box to make my money back and then some now word of caution if you do get any box like this whether it's from thread up or goodwill just know that it's a gamble sometimes you get amazing things or sometimes you find nothing but junk sometimes you'll get one or two really cool things so just keep that in mind if you order one that it is a gamble. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Margaret. I'm a reselling homeschooling mom that sells things on eBay and Etsy to help support my family. And if you don't wanna miss any content about what kinds of things sell, what kinds of things you should pick up from thrift stores, tips and videos, things like that, then go over there and hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified when I put out new videos. Let's dive in to this jewelry box. Here it is. Let's look inside. Okay. So right off the bat, I don't see anything amazing just off the top. Oh wait, I see some tiger's eye there. I always like getting natural stone. So that's a win right there. Some tiger's eye. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the box to the side and I'm going to pull things out onto this white tray to make it a little bit easier to see. As we go along, I'll tell you what it is and if it's something I think I will list or if it's something I think I will put into a lot. I do sell craft lots. Um, they're a mix of things that need to be repaired or things that are missing stones and sometimes it's just wearable stuff like this that I don't think I'll get around to listing so it's kind of a mix of lots, kind of like what you get with a Goodwill box. Just a little bit of a mix of everything. So this is a pretty cool bracelet. I like how wide it is, but this is probably one that I'm gonna put into one of my lots. I think this would sell. It's got a little bit of, like it needs to be cleaned a little bit, something there. Um, so this will go into a lot that I will make. And I get the question a lot, where do I sell these craft lots or jewelry lots that I'm selling that I talk about here? Um, if you're interested, then just send me an email, texasgaltreasures at gmail.com, and I send a PayPal invoice. Sometimes I get around to listing them online, but a lot of times I don't. So I just have bags over there ready to go into a padded mailer and send them off. All right, next up, this is a pretty cool looking cuff. Uh, it's like zebra striped only with different colors, black and kind of like a mauve brown color. This will go into a lot as well. This one is pretty cool. This is a, it's like a lucite almost. This one's pretty neat. I think I'm going to, look at that. Wow, I think that's awesome. Oh, this is an Alexis Bitar. I have some earrings from this brand that I need to list. I might have shown them in uh, a video lately of expensive costume jewelry that I need to list uh, because I have some. What gave it away is if you can see along the this part, it's textured and the earrings I have are kind of textured like this and they're kind of um, see-through, translucent. They don't change color like these ones. This one does, but man, that's awesome. So let's see, is it missing any stones? It doesn't look like it. This is possibly a bracelet that is, um, if it's not missing any stones, and I'm gonna look it up some more, I'm gonna really look it over carefully, but this one could be worth well over $100. So I will pop that up when I, oh, I'm so excited, Alexis Bitar. And I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Um, it's not Bitar. Uh, but anyway, look at that, how fun. Whoop, now you, wait, now you see it, now you don't. Now you see it, now you don't. Cool, right? Okay, so magnetic closure, Alexis Bitar right there. 
I am going to sell this one for sure. Oh, and quick side note, this will be one that I most likely make a video for, so if you see a random video of me playing with a bracelet like this, because this is one of those things that is really hard to capture in a photograph, so this will be one that I will want to take a short video of to put in my listing, because how are you gonna explain, I mean, you can explain it with words, and then you can get a picture of it like this and a picture of it like this, but it's gonna look like two separate bracelets. So if you have a video in your listing showing it moving and showing the color change, then it will really highlight the features of the bracelet. And I do have a video, I, I get that question too. I have a video showing how to do that, a video in a eBay listing. I could just sit here and play with this thing. I love it, but I have to sell it, but I love it. Look how fun. <laughs> okay, let me stop now. So here we've got a clamper bracelet. It's got a cool kind of uh, S-shaped metal. It, it's got some wear, let me see. Okay, the, the it looks like it's rubbing off, so I could probably clean this up and sell it. I personally like it. So I'm probably gonna try to clean this up because it's got a cool kind of like tribal, kind of almost uh, uh, art deco-ish look to it. Modern, you know, modern art sort of. So I could see that selling. Again, I'll just have to clean up some of this uh, tarnish on it. This just needs to be cleaned up a bit. Next up is this Tiger's Eye chip brace, uh, necklace rather. It's quite long. A lot of times I save stuff like this for my sister, but I'm probably gonna try to sell this one unless she needs more Tiger's Eye. I feel like I've given her quite a bit of tire, Tiger's Eye lately, so I'll ask her, see if she needs it. If not, then I will just list it for sale. I'm guessing probably about 15 to 17 dollars or so on this. Oh boy, we got a lot of tangles here, which is not my favorite. Look at this little cute unicorn though, that's adorable. Oh gosh. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this, because I've got quite a big knot of stuff here, is I'm gonna go through and just find the clasps and see if there's anything that's marked and then maybe come through with a magnet because it looks like there's quite a bit of clears that's a clears that's clears um and while they probably sell some silver they they certainly don't sell much silver so chances are unlikely that things here are going to be oh, wait 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 i may have spoke too soon this when this little piece right here caused me to pause because frequently when you see a necklace that has this on it, that's usually where the mark is. So I may have some silver mixed in here. And again, the piece, I don't know what this, I, was, I always say it looks like a rounded off razor blade, but th there's certainly a word for it. And it's usually attached right next to the clasp. I got the silver one out. It's got a little M charm on it. The M charm is also marked with a 925 up at the top. Oh, uh, yay. Okay, so this will come to the side. Let me go through here now and see if I've got any other silver stashed away in this knot. This little soccer ball is pretty cute, but I, I don't think it's silver. Let me get my magnet out okay so i'm i'm trying to get this soccer ball separated from the rest so i got the soccer ball one out and it looks like the class one this one is marked 925 so i'm gonna set this one aside with my other necklace that is silver all right it looks like the rest of this is just Claire's stuff. I have extracted what I needed, the ones that were silver, and I think the rest of this will go into a jewelry lot for somebody else who likes to detangle jewelry. This is a white beaded bracelet. It's got a hang tag here, so let me see. This is a Monet brace, a necklace, so 
I may try to sell it. I'm going to put it in my pile to possibly sell. I need to look it up. It's nice. They're heavier beads. So they don't, they're not plastic, so they're probably glass. They make a nice sound to you. So this will go into my pile to look up. So next is just some random stretchy bracelets, plastic beads. This one's missing a stone. This is a glass bead bracelet, so this one I'll probably set to the side. My sister makes things, so I'll go, that'll go to her. And then this is cute, but I'm, if fabric isn't looking really good, I don't really like to sell it. So these will all go into just a craft lot. So next are these pretty cool wooden beads. They're, they seem really well done. These little yellow ones seem like they're lacquered. And then the clasp is this kind of fold over clasp. And there is a name there. I need my loop so I can see it because I cannot. Uh, it says Hong Kong on it. So those are vintage. So these ones I will likely attempt to sell. It looks like somebody here has tried a burn test on this or else it's just got a hole in it. But it almost looks like somebody burned it to see what it was at, at some point maybe. Maybe they weren't sure. Maybe it's not wood. Maybe I need to double check it. Maybe it's really a plastic. So I will double check those, but they feel like wood. They're pretty lightweight. I don't know. I mean, look at the drill hole. Look at that. They may not be wood after all. They might be plastic to look like wood. How similar are they? I don't know. They have different grains and stuff. Interesting. Yeah, these are, these are really well done. They're not really wood beads. There's, they're like lack, there's like a painted on. Because you can see around the drill hole where some of it started peeling away. Interesting. And then that mark there, kind of a burn mark or something. They're still pretty cool, so, hmm, what to do? Do I list them? Or, oh look, there's another spot where you can see where it's kind of peeling away. Yeah, okay, I'll put these in a lot. Here we've got some kind of maroon beads. They're plastic beads and they probably Sarah Coventry. Yep, they are Sarah Coventry. That's the hang tag for that there. It's kind of a diamond shape. Rhombus, if you will. Sarah Cove on that. So those will probably go into a lot as well. They would they would sell, but it might take a little time. Next are these is this kind of tribal bead looking necklace. This one's got wood beads and metal and glass or stone maybe so i may try to i may try to list these or there may be some that my sister could use with some of these type beads we'll see tell me what you think about this it is a really big it's uh on maybe faux leather a giant blue embellished rose it's huge i mean look at the size of this thing and oh gosh what do i want to do with this I, it might sell what do we think i think i'm going to try to sell it because it's weird and funky and it doesn't seem to be missing any stones i'm going to try to sell this so next are these they look like shell bead like a shell bead necklace but they're actually plastic so these ones will go into a lot also the clasp is broken on those. This one, <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with this necklace. It was tangled up in, with everything, and it's even still tangled up with itself and bonus hairs, multiple bonus hairs. But I think once I get it untangled and laid out and it'll look really pretty and cool, I mean, it's, it's kind of like that fluid, liquidy metal. So I think this one is probably going to be a good seller once I can get it to behave itself. I may have to whip it into submission. Uh, but yeah, am I up for the task? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Somebody may find it in a mystery craft lot if I lose my temper with it too much, but we'll see. Next are some plastic beads that look like they're trying to be carved bone. It might be wood actually. So these ones, ooh, will I sell them? Interesting. I'll have to look closer at these beads to see if they are as well or if they're plastic. This one's pretty cool. This one I'll sell. It's a collar style choker metal necklace with these. Uh, they, they look like they're trying to be turquoise, but they're not. But they're pretty cool. So I could see this selling for about 20 bucks. Same thing here. People love this turquoise color. 
I will need to wipe down this chain. It feels pretty grimy. So I can just get, you know, some soapy water or something, or just even a, a damp cloth, wipe it down, and uh, and then I can sell that. Again, I'll probably put this, this one probably for 15 to 17 bucks. This one is three strands of plastic beads. It's vintage, and I don't see a maker on it. Oh wait, there's something written on the back of this clasp. It says Japan on the back of the clasp. I think I could try to sell this. I mean, I feel like it's probably a dime a dozen because I see a lot of white plastic beads like this. But somebody might be looking for this style in particular, this like three strand, and it's exactly what they're looking for. So I will likely put this up for about 17 bucks. We've got some faux pearls, likely faux pearls. They're not tied, and I know not all pearls are tied in between, but most of them are. Uh, and then if you look in between these two pearls, another way to tell is rub them on your teeth. But if you look between the beads, you can see where the drill hole is. There's like a, a spot where the coating, where it's kind of a painted on, where it's drilled through. I mean, they've, they look pretty nice for some faux pearls. They've got this kind of knacker on them, that kind of sheen that pearls have. So they might, they might sell okay, I don't know. Because they do have the look, you know, some faux pearls are better than others. But these ones do have a nice look to them, so they might, I don't think they would sell for that much, maybe 12 bucks or so. I'll, I'll look it up, I'll, I'll think about it on those. This, I don't even know what to make of this necklace. This will go into a lot. It's so weird it might sell, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna, if you know something about this, tell me, but I'm gonna put it into a lot. And then this bolo with a shell, that would likely sell, so I'll probably try to sell that. I don't think it'll sell for too much, maybe 15 bucks or so. And then next we've got another necklace that's got, looks like Mary, and this one looks like it could be silver, so let's take a closer look at it. The chain is magnetic, and then this is also magnetic, but there is a marking on the back, so let's take a peek at it. So the back says Sterling, and it says Bliss. So I'm trying to see. Now, this could be one of those times. So Sterling is 925, which is 92.5% Sterling silver. The other percentage that makes it a you know, to 100% is another type of metal. That other type of metal can have something in it that is magnetic. I rarely find that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put this with my scrap stuff um, to test because it, even if it's got something else in it, if it's sterling, it'll, st it'll still test for sterling. But as I was told by a jeweler, stamps are cheap, but this one is really suspect because it is tarnished like silver. So that, I mean, when I saw it, I thought it was silver because of the tarnish. Not so much the chain though. Let's see if this, I mean, the chain doesn't look silver at all. Yeah, the chain has got some green copper residue in there. Here we've got some dichroic glass. Dichroic glass is a type of glass that's made, uh, it's a chemical process. I can't remember exactly how they do it, but it's futuristic and lasers and all that fun stuff. Uh, but you can tell by the way the glass is at the back. And so this is a dichroic glass heart, which I may try to sell. There are people that are really into dichroic glass. So, I'm gonna set this one aside to sell. These are what appear to be blue wooden beads on this necklace. And yeah, this will likely go into a lot. All right, more fun stuff. Here we go. All right, we got these detangled. So this one is a super duper duper long necklace. It's kind of cool. It's got all these teeny tiny little crystals in it. They're really nice. They're really nice. So, I'm probably gonna try to sell this. It's not magnetic. It'll take me a minute to look it over, but I'll flip it over and look across the back of all of these to see if I see any marks. I mean, chances are it's likely stainless steel. <laughs> Aha, now we're talking. We've got some garnet chips. 
So these are garnet chips, uh, just like the Tiger's Eye I had earlier. I will try to sell these. I usually give them to my sister, but I've given her quite a lot lately. Uh, unless she really needs them or wants them, then I'll just sell these garnet chips. And depending on the length, it's quite a long length, I might be able to, to go $17 to $20, maybe more. I'll look at the prices and sell the, what similar is up there right now. Now this is fun. So we've got a leather strap necklace and there are charms on it for, it looks like a, sh a ship, like a schooner, Spanish galleon, a key, and a treasure chest. Those are fun. I would probably take the, the charms off of this leather one and put it on something else. However, it is a nice piratey necklace. This was tangled up in there. This is kind of cool. It's this choker style uh, wire, uh, collar style, I mean, and then this enamel centerpiece on it. It's pretty cool. It's got a little ding in it. So I'll put this into a lot. This one is weird and I can't decide if I like it or not. So it's a shell that's been sliced and then filled and sealed with like, it looks like amber chips or copal, you know, that's been reconstituted, but not well. <laughs> and so I'm guessing this is the front side. So you'd wear it like that. But then this side is so bumpy, it would like scratch you up. I don't know. I'm gonna put this into a lot. <laughs> I think it, if it was better done, it would probably sell. Okay, so we've got this wood stretch cuff style bracelet. This would actually probably sell. I may look into selling this one. Um, this is a really cute uh, bracelet. It is, I think it's missing, yeah, it's missing a stone there. It's got like these AB style. AB stands for Aurora Borealis, which has that iridescence to it like so. So that's like an AB um, bracelet. Okay, but this will go into a lot, even though it's really pretty but it's missing a stone. We've got a bracelet with a rosary, like a rosary style. This will go into a lot. Same thing with these kind of just beads. And then I am really sad that the mate is not here on these. They're, it's kind of dirty, but these remind me of like Rainbow Bright. These are screaming the 80s. And oh my gosh, why is the mate not here? It's magnificent. Now we have an Alex and Annie. This one will sell. Um, they don't always sell for as much as I wish they would, but this one maybe 15 or 20 bucks. I'll look it up and see. Depends on the subject matter, but it's got a cool leaf on it, so it might do well. So next up, we've got this. Oh, it's a necklace. It's a necklace length. Normally I see these and they're like bracelets, but this is a necklace length, almost like a Pandora style necklace. I don't know if this is Brighton or this. I mean, this part looks like Brighton, but then some of these look like they would be Pandora. What do you think? Some of the beads are cute. All right, I'm gonna put that into a, a lot. Okay, this bracelet's cute. This one I will sell. It is got nautical like shells and saw, sea stars and the sand dollar. This one's pretty cute, so I think this one I will try to sell. This, this has been an actually fair jewelry box. Oh, and this is adorable. Y'all look at this. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom it in. It's a sterling silver necklace. So we've got a silver, and there's that that piece that I always tell you, look for that, whatever that is called. It's like a label tag thing on a necklace or a bracelet. It's next to the clasp. And that usually will have the markings on it. And so there's that, but then look at this charm that it's got. It's a heart. It's, hang on, it's tiny, but it's hinged. And it's got a clasp so you can lock it in, like so, XOXO. See, but then look inside, watch. If I can get it back open. Inside, there's a chain that has a tiny heart on it that hangs there. And you keep it inside the little heart box. Isn't that cute? And it's attached in there. It's not part of the other, it's not part of this chain, see? That is separate. I don't know who made this, but it's adorable. So, I will have to look this up, but I think this will sell for a good amount. I'm thinking probably at least 40 bucks, if not more. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. 
45. I'm talking myself into more. It's so cute though. It opens. I love jewelry that does stuff. It's not just jewelry. It does things. Found the mate to the bird and a string. Here's a cat and it's it's a brooch. It's not the best made brooch, but I can clean these up and still sell it. So I mean maybe like 10 or 12 dollars. It won't be a lot. It's not the best best quality, but it's still a cat brooch. People like cats. This bracelet I like a lot too. I would definitely oh, look at all that damage though. It's it's a lot of damage, but I love this style of bracelet a lot. But oh, I don't even know if I should put it in a lot or not because of the bare degree. But tell me what you would do. I mean, just destroy it or try to clean it because that's quite a lot. It looks like it's probably damaged the metal already too. Hmm. I may I may try cleaning it and see how it does. But I have a feeling it's going to have really done some damage to the metal that's there. Eh, darn it. All right, a couple of more things. We've got this interesting heart brooch. It looks like it's made from two nails twisted together. I may try to sell that. It's just different. And then there's this one, this circular brooch with these blue stones in it. Know, I might try to sell it. I I feel like I see a lot of this. That's the only thing. So, but I don't know. I'm gonna look it up. I might be able to sell this for I don't know, 15 bucks or so. And again, if you ever feel like there's no way you can get more, or no way you should not ask for that much, let me know. That'll go to a lot. Oh, you're not attracting the magnet. Who are you? It's not attracting the magnet. It's got a gold post. Let's zoom it in. See if we see any marks. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if you were gold? That would be awesome. Okay, let's do this again. Oh, is it? Is it pulling even a little? It is pulling a little. Oh, okay, never mind. You are pulling even just the slightest pull. But we can look for a mark anyway, just for fun. So the back of it says that it's 14 karat gold filled, which I did not realize had scrap value. You guys educated me. Uh, because y'all said that the gold filled can scrap out like a silver would. So it wouldn't give me the same amount as scrapping gold, but hey. Um, so the back is, so this part might be as well. I'll look at it closer later, but I'm going to go ahead and put this with my scrap. And then this necklace. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. And I'm going to sell it. It's an M&M. There are M&M lovers out there. So it's got an M&M charm. And then it's got the little M&M hang tag in the back. Like so, red M&M. So I definitely think this could sell. I don't know for how much because I don't know how many are up there. So, but I'm guessing at least 15 bucks. It's small, so it'd be for a small neck, but still, I think 15 bucks. And then all the rest that's on the tray because I jumped out the box. So pretty much all the rest of this will go into a lot. There's a lot of medallions here. And it looks like pretty much the rest of this stuff, this is an earring, Jack Daniels earring, uh, will go into a lot. So if I ended up selling everything on the lower side of my estimate, let's try to figure out what I think I could get. So let's say eight bucks here, maybe 10 bucks on this one, eight bucks on that one. Again, I'm gonna list these for higher, but I'm gonna guess on the, on the lower side. Um, eight bucks here, I say 10 on this one, 15 on the low end on this one, probably eight on the lower end on that one. <laughs> I remember that a lot. Yeah, these white ones, maybe like 10 on the lower end. Let's say 15 on the low end. Uh, silver M necklace, say 15 on the low end. Same thing with this soccer ball, 15 on the low end. We'll say 10 on the lower end on that one. Same thing here, I'll say 12 maybe on the lower side. We'll go 12 on that. We'll go maybe like 10. That might be high for that one actually. Uh, maybe like eight. Again, these are low. I don't want an email saying, you said you would sell it for eight. Uh, maybe 11 for those, nine. Oh, uh, let's say 12, 11 on this one, eight on that one. <laughs> you, oh gosh. Okay, I'm putting you in a lot. I don't even wanna mess with you. This one will say like 
Mm, 10 on the lower end or 12. And then this one will probably be at least 100 bucks. At least. 100 on that one. And then this one, probably on the lower end, I'd probably do 40. Maybe less, but mostly 40. Okay, so if I sold all this stuff, I have it over here now on a new tray. New tray. If I sold everything kind of on the lower side of my guess, then um, we're probably looking at about $377. So, and it cost me about 20 bucks, 20, let's see with the shipping, maybe 30 bucks. So that would be, you know, a good $340 profit. Probably I'm gonna be more. So this one, this box has definitely been worth it. Let me know if you've had any good boxes lately or if you've even gotten a Goodwill blue box. I get the question frequently, where do you get them? Um, they're not on Shop Goodwill. They're on their own site called goodwillbluebox.com and they go on sale Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and they sell out fast. So if you wanna get, get you can get on their mailing list and they'll, they'll send you a reminder saying restock tonight and you just have to go wait, I think it's like five or six central. So anyway, uh, go down there and leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Leave me a thumbs down. Leave me some feedback if you feel like I could have done something differently or better because I always want to improve so that I'm doing the best I can for you guys. And I will talk to you on the next one. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.